Welcome, my name is Poor Nielsen with Random R Attack, and this is a tutorial series of how to make Tracer's Gun in Blender and Texture It in Substance Painter. Now, like I said, it's a series. It's more than one, one tutorial because it's going to take quite a bit of time and we're going to go in depth. So, this first tutorial, we're going to basically cover the setup, how to get reference sheets put up in Blender, and then we're going to, we're going to look through the different reference sheets and make a plan what do we want to do? How are we going to do this? What is an intelligent way to tackle this? And then we're going to go back into Blender and we're going to start modeling this. So now that we're in Blender, go ahead and hit N to open up that window there. Hit Background to Images and Add Image. Now these are going to be our different references. So I'm going to open up that reference image that I have that I've prepared in advance. And now I want to talk about all these different options. So currently I'm in front view. If I hit three, I'm in side view, or control three is left. And so as I look at this, you have the axis. This is in all views. If I go to three, I'm in right ortho, and I'm gonna go ahead and change that to right. Now if I go to front view, you can't see the reference. So I'm gonna set up several different reference sheets for the different sides. So let's go through this one first. It's not a movie clip, um, it's the image right there, single image. And I'm looking, it's not generated. All that stuff is pretty much worthless. All you want to know is the axis and the image that you're using. Color space doesn't matter. View as render doesn't matter for our purposes. Back and front opacity does matter. As I increase opacity, you can see that that's 100%. If I put front, my image goes in front of my model. So I'm gonna move this down to about 0.25 so I can see through it but I can still see the model that I'm working with as well. These two let you basically move left and right, up and down, on the X or Y axis accordingly. If you try and hit Control Z, it doesn't work, so don't do that. Let's go ahead and move this. And I'm gonna hit Shift to move it like that. Now, flip horizontal does what you think it does, and flip vertical does what you think it does. Now, rotation is actually what we want to do because we want to get this to be flat or not flat, but um, horizontal. So I'm just gonna move this. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it first, maybe move it up a bit so I can see how much that goes. And my voice is cracked, <laughs> did you hear that? Sorry about that. So negative 21.5 is about where you want. And that's perfect. I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and I'm gonna box select this and basically just make a very rough sketch of what this gun looks like. I'm just moving this over with G, Control R to make an edge loop, C to select, E to extrude, G to move, and I'm basically just making a rough sketch of what this gun looks like so that as I go to different um, perspectives, I can get the, the, the images right. So let's add an image. Go ahead and add it to the left axis. Just pick the same gun reference there. I'll change it to 21.5 because that was the rotation. Scroll that and then move it up a bit. Okay, put in front at 0.25 again. I'm just looking to see exactly where that's at. A little bit there, okay. I'm just gonna scroll that a little bit more and it's not high enough, so I'm gonna move that up just a little bit more. And there you go, three or control three, and you can see I have the reference for it. Now if I hit one to go center, add one more image here, do front, open the image, and then I'm going to go front 0.25 again, move this to the center, now this one's a little interesting because I can't rotate this. So it's facing the wrong way. I can't use this as a reference, but I can get the thickness correct through this. So basic layout, here we have our gun. Now there's also gonna be times that I need other perspectives too. And so something I like to do is I add an image and then I have this reference with like the diagonal right there. And you can see that. And they're layered on both of these. I do want this all views so that I can see this at all times, but I'm gonna basically move this way up or way down. No, not that much. So just right about there. 
and now it's not our way, I'm going to change the opacity really high. That way, as I'm working on this, if I want to look at the diagonal view, I hit one or anything, zoom out, and I can kind of look at this and see how this looks from a diagonal. So it's set up so that I have the reference. Now, before we can just jump into Blender like we want to and start texturing or modeling this thing, we need to do some setup work. It is totally worth your time to take four to five minutes to go through this, kind of separate this out in your mind, see what, it's, what it looks like. Uh, that way, when you start modeling, you have a plan, you have an understanding about how it all fits together. So right here, we have a separate piece, and this is probably one of the first things that we're going to model. Now, all these small things are just details that we're going to add in when we texture this thing, and it's not something we have to model in. This thing right here um, is a little bit more complex. Let's go ahead and draw on this. And we are going to have to basically cut into the model right here and make some topology right there. As we look front view, you can see it actually just cuts in right there. And those bolts are actually geometry as well. So we need to just basically model that whole thing right there. Uh, right here, I'm just going to start with a cylinder and kind of work my way back. Everything else, I'm just going to kind of extrude off of that cylinder. And so that's a good piece to have by itself. Down there, that rubber thing's by itself. These grips, you can see how each of those are separate. And then this thing is separate. Now, I didn't, you know, color everything because everything else is basically separate. So that top is separate. That thing's separate. Um, this thing is going to be separate as well. And I'm going to, those are decals. And this thing right here is also a decal. So that's going to be in Substance Painter that I'm going to get this. That's going to be some rectangles there. That circle thing is probably one thing. I could cut into it right there, but I don't think I'm going to. This trigger is one object. There is a small grip right here. And then a rubber grip there. And then these bolts right here, we can probably just do those in Substance Painter as well as that. But this bolt right here and this bolt right there actually have geometry. Let's look at that. So diagonal mode, you can see that it's actually a cylinder coming out, whereas these things are just flat with the, with the model. And so right there, you can also see that that's a cylinder and that there's some rubber up there, and that's good to know. So now we have a basic idea of what this looks like. And so instead of trying to model the whole thing at once, we're going to split this up. Now also, I look for flat faces. So you see right here, this thing is flat, this thing is flat, uh, this is flat. That's where I start, and then I can extrude from there and kind of curve down like this. And then I can extrude it down like that. Cylinders, I can just pull it back, and then this thing right there, I can kind of just extrude out of it. And then here, that's a simple circle that I'm just basically beveling. Here's there's that flat surface, and you can see, I'm going to extrude it there, extrude it there, and kind of curve it that way. Also, we're looking at things that we might not necessarily see. So, for example, right there, there's a rubber thing embedded into that metal. I don't know if you can see that. Um, on the back here, this is interesting. This is all glass, and then underneath the glass, there's actually geometry that we have to model as well that starts coming out of the glass. Right here, I just kind of pay attention of how that looks, how this looks. I'm just looking for things that are going to help me as I start modeling this. So for example, did you see this little rubber thing down there? Did you see this inset rubber thing here? And then those things are just, you know, going to be textured on. I feel that we know how to do this, so let's just jump back in. All right, it's go time. So go ahead and just tab into edit mode. Delete these bottom uh, vertices right there. So I just box selected delete. I'm going to do this flat face here first. So select this, move it down. And then hit this, hit G, and then Y to constrain. I'm going to follow this. Well, first, let's get it right there so it's at the right place. Okay, so C, select that. I'm just going to extrude this. So I'm hitting E to extrude, and then just bringing that down like this. I'm just going to extrude along the, the whole face of this. Now, I looked this up. This gun is about 12,000 triangles in Overwatch. I think the practice one that I showed you at the start of the tutorial was about 
6,000 triangles. So I was sitting at half the triangle um, count and it still looked pretty decent. So don't feel bad if you're using more or less. Now right here, this is kind of fun, you can zoom in and you can almost see where they did the geometry. See like right there? I think I missed one versi there, but it doesn't matter. And then this last one, just select both of these and hit F. So there we go. So now we have the flat face. Um, go to seven, so that's top view, select those, delete those. You can mirror this if you want to, but I don't, I'm actually using symmetry, so don't, don't feel like you have to do it my way. So now I'm going to select these and then E to extrude and then bring those out like that. See middle mouse button to unselect that, bring this down and then see where the vertices that are in the right place. I'm going to hit C and then middle mouse button and then just move the ones that aren't in the correct position like that. So I'm just hitting C, middle mouse button, G, C, middle mouse button, G. And then I get something that I'm happy with. There you go. Now I want these to be lined up. So I turn on snapping or I can leave it off due to vertices. And then if I hit control, it will snap. That way I don't have to turn on snapping. I can just hit G or control. So I'm going to constrain this, hit control and it snaps. And there we go. And it snaps perfectly. Now I'm just going to kind of fix these like that as well. So I'm just hitting G to move those. And that's going to be the downward curve right there. This is going to be the hard edge. And I like what this looks like. So select these. Oh, actually first I'm going to put a edge loop right there for the hole and then select these. Hit E for extrude. And I'm looking at the right hand side as I'm extruding this, trying to match that up there. Some curvature needs to be preserved there. So I'm going to move that. Okay. I actually, you don't want a quad that looks like that. So how about we just add some more geometry? Just control R, put an edge loop there. Just kind of pull that out a little bit more. There we go. And then let's select these. Hit S, zero, and then Y, and I'll make it scale at zero on the Y axis. And then you can just put there, select this and this, but I want to be perfect. So I'm just gonna select these two and hit R like that. And there we go. Now you can see that these are too high. So I'm just gonna scroll this down a little bit and it doesn't match up perfectly here, but that's okay. I want this all to be level. So I'm gonna do that same trick, box select, scale, and then Z and then zero. There we go. Let's extrude this up like that. Select those, extrude this out. Now you see this is curved. So there's a cool trick that I do. So I'm gonna just extrude this here and then extrude this down. This is not an orthographic image. So there's a curve there, but it's, it's flat. But this is curved, so what I do is I add an edge loop here and an edge loop here, and then select a vertice and hit extrude, and then extrude that like that, hit F. Now select three of these, hit F, select three of these, hit F, and then all of a sudden I have a nice little curve right there. That's kind of cool. Now there is a taper, but I'm gonna do that later. This face, I'm going to worry about that later, so I'm not gonna fill that in. And we don't do end guns. Don't do end guns when you're doing game assets. So I'm going to C select all of these vertices here, not the flat face ones, because I don't want to move those. I'm going to push these in quite a bit. Now I'm going to move all these in because that's about where it's at. Okay. So now you can start to see how this is working. Now I don't want a hard edge here. So I'm going to select all of these vertices. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit like that. So maybe I'll just do this. And, and you're going to have to play around with this until it looks exactly the way you want it. And don't feel bad. It's not like an exact science. It's an art form. Let's go ahead and select all of this and see how this works. I'm going to move this like that. So it's a better diagonal looking right there. 
going to select this, pull that out. It's looking good. And so it's coming in kind of, and then it'll tape right there. So now I'm going to just add a loop here. One more edge loop there. Grab this thing, pull it in, grab this thing, pull it in. And there I have the taper right there. And that's what we want. And that looks about right. Now I need to look at this. Now it's rounded there. Is that what ours looks like? It's going up and that's rounded. So that's about right. To test this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this along the x-axis and then shading smooth, go to uh, edge split modifier. Okay. Now this is going to cut this where it's going to get hard. So I'm going to go, oh, don't bring it down, move it up. And I can see that that's, that's looking smooth there and that's looking smooth there. And that's what I'm looking at. And that's looking pretty good. A little too dramatic there, so maybe let's just tuck that in so I can delete all these because that was just for testing purposes. And then these pieces here, so box select those with B, and then just taper those in just a bit. So it's less steep. And that's pretty close to what Tracer's Gun's curve looks like. Now we're going to fix those normals later. So tab those. And we also want to fill this face in, and we want to cut this out right there as well. So I hit Control R, scale that, S, Y, 0. And there you go. Control R, S, Y, 0. Slide that. And now I can delete these faces here, like that. Go to vertex mode. Now I'm going to start to fill this in. You want to fill this in with quads or triangles. Quads are preferable, but triangles aren't bad because we're not going to be animating this to bend. So right here, it's fine to have a triangle. Right here, this is a pretty big stretch. Um, we're going to test it and see if it gives us any problems. And if so, we might add some more geometry there. Just making some quads. Triangle there. This looks fine. This is starting to look kind of weird right there, right? And so let's go ahead and add a edge split modifier again. Oh, and you can see it's perfect. It's fine. Yep. So I'm going to bevel this later, but you're just looking at those flat edges right there, and it's looking great. So just selecting these with shift, right, select. There's a triangle. Here's a quad. Now all of these are going to be triangles. And you're going to see as we do a couple, it'll give you weird um, details. But if you do them all, it's going to be perfect. And this is only working because this is a flat face. So right there, you can see that it's weird, and then it gets fixed. Yep. Now T, go to shading, recalculate normals, and now all the normals are good. And you can see that's looking really good. Um, as it comes like this, is that what it wants to look? That doesn't look quite right. Now granted, we don't have this extruded like this, right? But I'm looking at right there, I'm looking at the shapes. So let's look at the shape right here. It's basically flat, slow, tapered in, right? And then it goes up like this and then flattens like that. So is that what our gun's doing? So going right here, does this go straight up and then curve? Not so much. So I need to bring this in a little bit more. How am I going to do this? Let's think here for a second. Uh, I think I'm just going to try and get it level with this. So box select that. Um, G, X, control to snap. Oh, much better. There we go. Okay. Now this should be a little bit bulging out. So alt select. Now it's going to not play perfectly well with that, but that's okay. And that looks better. All right. So I'm just looking for any abnormalities at this point. Right there is kind of doing something weird. I'm going to grab that and just pull it. Let's look. And yep. Okay. So 
I'm just looking again for any ab, ab, more, abnormalities. So it takes a little finicky, um, a, a little finagling, but that's okay. You can mirror this if you want to, but I'm going to show you a cooler uh, for, for my workflow, something I enjoy more. I tab in, I select everything, hit W, symmetrize, and it just reflects it like that. Now, if it doesn't symmetrize for you right, so for example, if it, you hit symmetrize and you get something like this, it's because you're setting your directions wrong. So just go down here and change it to the correct one and it should work just right. And there we go. Now this isn't 100% thick, so we're gonna do a solidify. Where's that? There it is, okay. I'm gonna move this above the edge split. Here we go. Thickness, get that a little bit thicker. Even thickness, high quality. We don't want fill normals, only rim. Uh, yeah, because we're trying to save faces, right? And you're never gonna see the inside faces there. So it's gonna look like this. Yep, and that's not bad looking. So that's about right. I'm just worried a little bit about the thickness, so don't get rid of the solidified modifier. Now, I put edge split on here so that I could see if it's working well. So for example, right here, I don't have enough geometry because it's too, it's too sharp of an angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these edges here. Alt, right click, shift, alt, right click, and then control B to add a little bevel. Now I'm only doing this to one side because I can just symmetrize this later but you can see that looks much smoother, much better. So let's look at this one more time. And it's, it's pretty subtle, so I think, do we have that? I do think we do have it. It's a little thick, so it's hard to see. So maybe a little too straight. So let's go front view, vertex, select, get all these vertice, vertices, slide those in like that. Ah, see, that's looking a lot better with the, the angle. So select everything W, symmetrize, and it takes care of it. Now let's go ahead and make this less thick just for reviewing this. Now I'm gonna leave this modifier because I might need to change this later, um, but don't, don't apply these. I'm looking around for any weird artifacts right there. You're bound to have a few. Now, in game design, you're not gonna fix everything. You're not gonna spend hours and hours to make this perfect. So if you see something small like that, you're okay to move on because it's nothing bad. Um, the edge looks good. Now we are getting pretty long, so let's just do these top parts and then we'll finish off this tutorial. So let's look at this reference here. We got a metal piece that goes along here and then up and then two separate things there. Then here, do you see the small little thing inside there? So we're gonna do those two things. I don't want to do it with this mesh because I want the modifier separate. So I'm gonna hit Control S, center cursor, Shift A, put a cube, tab into edit mode, scale that down. And then I'm just gonna bring it up here. And it kind of overlaps right there if you saw. I'm gonna drop that down. Now my reference has it lower than this, but I want to show up so you don't have to follow the reference exactly. Um, because if you do this exactly, again, the reference wasn't orthographic. And so you do have to just kind of eyeball it just to make it look right. So I'm gonna go here, and now I'm just gonna extrude this up and then just pull it up. So extrude with E along the Y axis, and hit A to unselect everything, and then move this. Add another edge loop right there. Pull that down. Let's extrude this again, pull this up. That's about where we want it. So then I'm just gonna extrude it. And it actually goes almost all the way to the end right there. Okay. So there's that. Let's go ahead and go to front view, see the thickness. Let's zoom out there. It looks like the thickness is covering just that flat portion with a little leeway. Okay, so just going here. Is that too, I, I think that's too skinny. Let's look at it from a different angle. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, that's way too thin. So going back here, go to top view, just stretch this out by doing scale along the x-axis, and that's good. Now, I'm going to move this up because nah, I kind of want that hanging over the edge like that. Let's add a modifier just to make sure that the edges are good. Um, let's make smooth, tab out, and that's looking really good. So that's perfect. We don't need any more geometry for that. So go ahead and tab, shift A, cube, tab in edit mode, pull this thing up like this. And now we're just going to be doing these two barrels right here, or not barrels, uh, sights. Bring this over. Now I can actually hide this geometry because it's never going to be shown. I didn't hide this one because it actually shows. So select this, delete faces. Um, let's go ahead and look at this, scale this along the x-axis. Scrub that. There we go. Now let's look at how these combine, okay? I don't think it's working the way we want. Symmetrize right there. It's not thick enough, and you can also see this goes up, goes over, goes back in. So as long as we get it to look like that, we know that we're correct. So I'm going to make this bigger. Now notice I'm only doing one because I just select everything and symmetrize it. And then I need to pull these out just a little bit. Oh, and that's perfect. You see how it goes up, over, up. Symmetrize. Oop. And now that's too thick. So let's just make this a little bit thinner. Select everything. Symmetrize. And there we go. That looks really good. I like how that goes. Now let's go ahead and do this last part here. So I'm going to select this, tab into edit mode, select these, shift D, duplicate, and move those along the y-axis, and then just get it right there. Now the reason I'm going to do this is I want to be the same thickness but and height, basically. Extrude this out. I'm going to control R. This is as thick as the piece is going to be. Um, I'm looking here, I need a vertice here, because it lines up there, and a vertice here, because it lines up there. I'm going to grab these vertices here. Uh, it's kind of hard to select. There we go. Now Jean moves that. Move that over a little bit like that. And then I want to move... Oh, not those. Move this like this. Now, oh, <laughs> I actually wanted to extrude it. Do you see how I actually just move the vertices? So let's undo all that that we just did. Go ahead and go to face select, select these, and then extrude this up with E. And now vertex select. Just move that up like that pulling this in. And again, a lot of this... Oh, I made another mistake. I'm only getting one vertice at a time. I think I accidentally turned off back face. There we go. So like I was going to say, um, as you do this, it's not an exact art. There's a lot of um, finagling, a lot of just kind of playing around, seeing what works, what doesn't work, seeing what that looks like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and symmetrize this thing again. And now to get these inner little things, I'm just going to select these faces here, duplicate this. And then I'm going to scale this down so it's smaller. Just move it to the right place, extrude it out. And so there's that small little, uh, don't even know what to call it. That's not working very well. Select that, select that, symmetrize. And there we go. Now that's a little too small, so just tab in, and then I can just scale this up. So L, select, scale it, and then I can kind of move that where I want it. I'm just gonna L select these things and then symmetrize again, and there you go. This video is getting pretty long. Let's just go ahead and call that a day. The next video, we're gonna be modeling for the whole 30 minutes, so that should be really fun. 
we're going to get a lot of the gun done, if not the whole gun done. That's kind of my goal. And then from there, we're going to be able to unwrap and start texturing it, which is really fun. Thank you so much for all of your support. Give us a thumbs up and comment in the comments below. Do you have any questions about what I did? Um, if you just want to chat, say something fun. Who, who do you play when you play Overwatch? Um, I don't play Tracer. <laughs> Thank you again. Consider also following us on social media. We have Twitter and we have Facebook. Uh, also, I have a Patreon account. So any pledge helps me keep making videos like this. Thank you so much for your time. Have an awesome day.